Welcome to this edition of Aesthetic Insider Take 5. Today, my guest is the infamous, the well-known, and the CEO of MERS, Bob Radigan. He's your CEO global now of Aesthetics for MERS, isn't that right? Yes, yeah. We are uh, beginning effectively April 1st, just moved to a uh, fully dedicated global business in aesthetics. Fantastic. Well, now, so that brings up my first question, which is something that I think particularly is of interest to you. How is this COVID virus affecting MERS? Now, you're an aesthetic company, so some of the other companies are still able to do procedures that are reimbursable. There's still a medical component to their companies, but you guys are 100% aesthetic. Yeah, th this has been, um, you know, in talking with uh, colleagues, your yourself, friends, uh, folks in the leadership team, family members, certainly uh, beyond anything that we've experienced in our lifetime and hopefully are never going to experience again. Um, and I am certain we're all going to remember this for quite a long time, but your point's a, a good one, us being a pure play and now the largest purely dedicated medical aesthetics company in the world. Uh, we've had a, a very substantive and significant business impact as we don't have the diversity uh, broadly within the Mertz aesthetics business of reimbursed products, um, over-the-counter products. The good news is we're still owned by Mertz as a global uh, entity, and we have a consumer care business largely centered in Europe that, no surprise, is um, absolutely booming. The coffin care uh, segments there are just absolutely exploding. We're having a difficult time even maintaining. Care? What'd you call it? Yeah, it's consumer care. Consumer care. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, what, and what it's cough, cough and cold. That segment with the uh, yeah, COVID nineteen's been significant, and we we've um, you know certainly had to make some really assertive moves in the aesthetics business here. Um, we have everyone globally working in a remote work environment, and the focus there, and our our number one focus maintains safety of employees, their families, and our customers, and we literally. Uh, looking back a couple weeks ago, within a 24-hour period, effectively went entirely remote and moved towards virtual tools as our temporary normal, um, hopefully not going to be a long-term new normal. Um, I think that could move on even after we emerge out of this COVID crisis. Will you still have a team working mostly remotely? I, I don't think so. We're expecting to get back to a business as usual um, environment versus continuing to stay in a long-term remote work environment, but it has opened our eyes to a lot of opportunities in terms of uh, remote work in the future should we need for any number of reasons, either a, a local national disaster or something like this pandemic, which we hopefully will never experience again, um, and helped make sure we have the right technology in place, which I'm happy to say we've uh, been working very effectively through. Um, so we'll, we'll take the learnings from this um, to help assist any remote work-based environment uh, posture that we take going forward, but absolutely don't intend to uh, maintain this posture. And I, I'm really hoping we get out of it uh, quickly soon. Time is right to a business as normal posture. All right, question number two. Do yeah. you think the aesthetic patient has changed? And do you think the aesthetic market has changed? Will you look at this whole place differently when you come out of this crisis? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think it's hard not to. It's, um, you know, certainly in the midst of the crisis, it's um, often hard to, you know, vision how things could look in the, the future that are a lot more positive and less depressing and heavy than they are uh, currently. But what I expect to see happen is that when the restrictions are lifted, which is likely going to be on a country by country, and then in the U.S., a state-by-state -state basis, uh, when the government and society say it's now safe to, uh, to do that, there is going to be, I believe, an immediate spike in patients that um, are eager to get back into practices for their routine treatments. And um, that is something that I think everyone will experience. There will be a bolus of patients that come in uh, quickly, but I'm also pragmatic and, and recognize these are going to be a challenging few months uh, for all of us on both the, the professional and personal fronts. And with that um, is going to come a, a period of rebuilding. People that may be beyond the fear and concern of COVID-19 
uh, certainly are going to be also working through uh, the ramifications of the economic environment we're in. So um, it's going to be, I believe, not a, a light switch return to normal, but a, a several month through the balance of this calendar year rebuilding period for uh, all of our customers and, and all of our businesses in this, uh, this industry. We have the same issues our consumers do is that, you know, we're going to be struggling in the beginning. So what does MERS do to help stimulate the market for us and for the consumers? So we have a, a lot of things going on. I mean, right now, from an overall customer support standpoint, we have a very, very well-coordinated uh, plan of activities that uh, maintains our connectivity with the customer. Um, we're currently providing access to resources such as the Merch Institute of Advanced Aesthetics, which I know you're familiar with, has a tremendous amount of um, category and product-based educational material on it, as well as business-based uh, material that people can um, access at their leisure from home online. And we have opened that up now globally to all customers at no charge. So uh, that's one thing we're doing in the, the near term, just to help with continued ongoing education and, and support of our uh, customer base. And as we move into the future, which I'm really hopeful is going to be something we start seeing Q3 of this year is uh, things start to taper out and the patient flow starts to, to rebuild and get back to some sort of sense of normalcy, which we expect to be by the end of the year, beginning of next year at the, uh, the latest, assuming no you know, significant um, wave two, wave three effects of this pandemic uh, take place. Uh, we are already uh, preparing and well prepared to enter from a PR, social media, and other standpoint uh, with messaging to the audience that is uh, respectful. And when I say that, I mean not um, in any way going to say, hey, time to, you know, get back in and take care of what some people may perceive as a, a vain, unnecessary medical procedure, you know, shortly following one of the worst pandemics we've ever experienced in the, uh, the globe. So we're very actively focused on not just when uh, to re-enter with those activities, but also how to uh, from a, a content and a tonality standpoint. Okay, some of the companies are extending terms for us, replacing expired product. Do you have any plans yep. to do things like that? Yeah, we are um, on a reactive basis for folks that um, are requesting their terms be extended. Um, we're honoring that. Uh, we've you know, proactively gone to a, a number of customers already. And again, folks that are approaching us and requesting a, a terms extension, we're um, honoring that. We are on the... Uh, product return standpoint, going to exercise a tremendous amount of flexibility. Our, our policy is not to take back uh, product that is expired from a return standpoint, but uh, given the circumstances, it's frankly just the right thing to do for the customers to uh, loosen our, our stance and be more flexible and agile with respect to that. So um, we're also providing very active social media guidance. That's one of the things customers are asking us um, a lot about, which is how do they keep their practices uh, relevant while at the same time making sure they are sensitive to the uh, situation that, that everyone is facing. So clearly not the time to be, you know, putting up, um, you know, special promotional programs and things like that versus providing good guidance education to, to consumers about what the practice has to offer. Okay, question number four. When do you think yeah. we're going to end? When do you think we're going to emerge from this? So... I am hopeful and, you know, I'm hopeful that the markets will start to open up on a country-by-country country basis. And frankly, we've seen this um, already starting in some Asia-Pacific countries. And next week, uh, Taiwan is one example, is one that is going to allow for uh, practices to start getting back into uh, the swing of things. But I'm hopeful that begins in May. You know, pragmatic terms is is going to be a several month rebuild. There is not in my mind an expectation that we're gonna be seeing the, uh, the demand and the business as usual that we had, which seems like years ago, but it was just a couple of short months ago uh, looking back. But by the end of the year, beginning of next year, um, I'm hopeful that we'll be in a position where we're in a, a relatively business as usual norm.
Does this change your investment strategies at all within the company, whether it's into R&D or education or new devices? We are in very aggressive cash preservation mode, as many companies are, uh, with the intent of having to not uh, lay off or furlough people outside of areas where there is government assistance being provided and is just immediately accessible to help offset uh, the impact of the, the potential person impacted. So uh, that's number one. And right now we've um, effectively clamped down on all of our, our discretionary spend until we start to, to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we've redirected very, very uh, heavily towards our digital-based programming. Uh, we're conducting webinars as an example. Uh, we want to make sure we're continuing to stay present and uh, very much support ongoing clinical education. We're actually right now doing two webinars a week, one or Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, one of them a week is on a business related topic to help the customers near term and also plan for how to, to reenter the market. And the other is on a clinical topic. So, okay. So your last question is kind of an easy one yeah. question. What do you, now that you're in isolation, what do you miss the most? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I, I first would say I, I have a lot of concern and empathy for everyone. I mean, I, I know how hard this is. We're, you know, you're dealing with it. We're all dealing with it. This is clearly unprecedented. It is no fun uh, for anyone. And I recognize that. But I, I, uh, I am really missing the ability to interface daily and actively with colleagues, customers, and friends. So um, that, that's what I miss the most and I'm looking. Yep, I, I agree with you 100% on that. So Bob, thanks so much for spending um, these uh, few minutes with me. We went, yeah, it was great to get it all out and that, that's five questions. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing each other real soon at some event, some place, because I agree with you. That's what I miss the most is just getting out and hanging out with colleagues and friends. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, I hope too soon. Hope we're all uh, Looking at this as a distant memory in the near term, although we're going to remember it forever, no doubt about it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. Take care and be well, and we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Steve. Stay safe. Okay. Bye. So, right. You ready to do five questions? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Please, um, I'll, please I'll probably. Uh, the site here. Half my difficulty on remote is trying to figure out if I have a decent shot of the uh, the video. <laughs> you know, where, where do you look in these things? Uh, um, putting my iPad on books to get the proper angle because I've been <laughs> yeah, for weeks just like whoop, picking up. Of, yeah. cool. Good, good, we uh, We're just today under. Uh, oh, do I have my phone in the way of this thing?